Okay, on this one, before I go on to look at some of the weaknesses amongst the different indicators and how we avoid them and how we therefore find an effective trading strategy, just wanted to do a bit of a recap and a bit of a reminder. Momentum. This is what it comes down to. Just in the same way fruit is a generic term for all these types of things. So momentum is for this. Now we're going to look at the stochastic, of course. We'll look at the RSI. We'll look at the MACD. There are others like the rate of change or a sub-indicator called momentum, just to make things lovely and complicated. Those are very similar to the RSI, which is why I don't want to sort of convolute and do more than we actually need to by having looking at too many. The other part that I want to look at as well through these diagrams, other than just making that point, is again what I've said before, the whole point about momentum and what it is we're trying to do. If this is time on this axis and this is price, you see price moving higher and higher as we go higher uh, up here, then what's happening is as time passes the price is going up and up and up then it starts decelerating. That's what we mean by deceleration. As it moves higher, we've got this acceleration down here, then we start getting deceleration. And that's what price momentum is trying to capture mathematically through these indicators. I also want to show you divergence in these pictures. The reason I want to show you divergence is because this is one of my favorite methods of actually finding entry and how we avoid many of the weaknesses of the indicators. The way we avoid the weaknesses of the indicators, one of the ways, is only looking for divergence patterns. So just to show you, we're going to look at real price charts in a second. But just to show you images, just to show clarity. If this is the price and it does this, and goes up like this, and so forth. Divergence occurs when the price makes, say, a peak there, a peak there, and a peak there. So it's making higher highs. But the momentum indicator is making lower lows. That's a negative divergence in that example. And that suggests bearishness for the price. In other words, after the next peak, the price is likely to dip and dip sharply. Now, it does, of course, dip here and dip here. But one of the weaknesses of not finding divergence, first of all, is that these dips can be shallow. Uh, or they can be non-existent, and therefore the indicators, the momentum indicator, whether it's the MACD, the RSI, whatever, can give us a false signal. By waiting for a divergence setup, some kind of setup like this, we ensure we get in at a higher probability trade of a downward move. The flip side, that was the negative divergence we saw there. The flip side is the positive divergence. The positive divergence works like this. We get a series of higher lows on the indicator, but the price makes lower lows like this. Yeah, so we've got an increased probability of an upward move after a positive divergence setup, a setup like this, than we do have without it. Because what will happen is, yes, you could say, well, wait a minute, the indicator's gone up here and so is the price, but that tends to be a weaker move. In other words, earlier on, Without a divergent setup, you tend to find a move where the price goes like this, starts to rise a bit, we get in, yeah, but the price then fizzles out and moves lower. Whereas, after a divergence, you've got a price which has gone like this, moved up, we get in, same point again, but there's an increased probability it's going to continue going higher. And the opposite applies for negative divergences. So do you understand what we're trying to do? We're trying to avoid the situation on a momentum indicator where we get in after a bit of a price rise. We we'll think we've got a good trend, but we really want to make sure that it's going to be more likely to be one of these than after we get in and we think, oh God, the market's out to get us than one of these. We don't know ahead of time which one it is, but the odds are greater that it's going to be one of these when you've had a divergence set up than when you haven't. That's an incredibly important point. Now you understand some of the theory and the background as to why we're going through all this trouble and what it is we're trying to get into on a price pattern. Next, going forward, we'll look at some more specific examples, detailed examples with real-life examples.